is now just 20 days away, but a pre-meeting of ministers has been underway this week to prepare. The COP21 summit is meant to lock in a global agreement on curbing climate change. And one of the ministers at the pre-meeting this week is the Environment, Forests and Climate Change Minister from India, Prakash Javadekar. He joins us now from the French Foreign Ministry, where those meetings are taking place. Mr. Javadekar, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us here on France 24. What are your thoughts? Have these three days of ministerial meetings yeah. brought us any closer to a universal agreement? I think we are closer to agreement because this pre-COP proved a good uh, uh, stock taking of what, where we have reached, and particularly after the first born uh, text, which was resisted by all. Now, we, I think the deal is on track. What are the biggest obstacles still to overcome, sir? I am a positive person, so I don't see obstacles coming. We can, if, you, if we have a will, there is a way. And there will be a way because we all are at least showing our will today. And no country, and particularly developed countries, have to take it seriously that they prove, provide leadership through their actions and commitments. Because the latest report has clearly indicated that developing world's INDCs are more than their capacity and more than their fair share. And developed world's INDCs represent uh, less than their capacity and much less than their fair share. And so uh, developed world will have to walk the talk on $100 billion, and they will have to walk the talk uh, and have little more ambitious uh, actions uh, on pre-2020. I think these are the two things, if they, uh, this happens, uh, it will be a very smooth deal in Paris. Uh, Mr. Javadekar, let's talk about your own country. And apologies for the sound here. I hope that we can uh, pursue this interview. Uh, India is often perceived as being a difficult player in the climate talks. Is that an unfair assessment? No, it, it is completely unfair because there may be the impression because of earlier things. But after Modi became prime minister, we are so proactive. And we have launched the huge renewable program of the world with 175 gigawatts. And we are leapfrogging on technologies. Thereby, our carbon footprint all over is going down. And our ambitious INDCs means saving of carbon emissions to the tune of 3.2 billion tons per annum. It will be huge. And we have already started working on it before 2020. We are not waiting for uh, 2020, but we are already started our action. And that is where now India uh, now is not perceived as a negative uh, force or uh, as naysayer. We are there to provide solution. We, are, we have brought two new issues on the table, lifestyle issues, because unless we uh, discuss the sustainable lifestyle issues, it, unsustainable lifestyle is, cannot be continued for long because we have only one planet <clears throat> and we must save it. And therefore, this unsustainable consumption needs to be discussed and there has to be new way of doing things. Secondly, climate justice. It is for poorer countries and poor sections of society because we are suffering for no fault of us. We are not part of the problem. We are just 3% of uh, cumulative emissions, which is causing temperature rise of 0 0.8 degree. But we are suffering, and therefore, climate justice is a must. Does India have a red line, sir? What if uh, the more developed nations don't increase their financial commitments? Is India ready to block an agreement over that? No, we don't block, we don't, we, we, we are not in the mindset of blocking anything. We facilitate and we will give alternative suggestions. If there are any differences between groups, we will come out with all our own suggestions. India, we are positive. It, we want Paris to succeed. As, do, as does everyone, I believe, sir. But, uh, because and, we care for Earth. 
And yet India has set a target of opening yeah. one coal mine every month. Can that really be compatible with efforts to limit global temperature rising to two degrees? No. No, no, absolutely not. Because our energy consumption, our coal consumption is one-fifth per capita of developed world. One-fifth. And therefore, what we are increasing, our energy mix will go a radical change from 2020 to 2030. We'll have 40 percent non-fossil fuel uh, capacity of our energy mix. So that's the most important thing what we are launching. And we can walk even more aggressively. The issue of technology and finance are therefore important. But we will never say uh, that coal consumption at our end is so much I don't believe in that because that is not a fact. Uh, you just take absolute... Germany has shifted from nuclear to coal. So their coal consumption will increase. So many countries have pickled... See, India has a context. We are just on the development trajectory. My 30% people don't have energy access. Can't I deny them? Uh, my 30% poor people must get prosperity. Our average consumption is 120th of that of Europe and 140th of that of uh, USA. And so my people have every right to grow and prosper. But we want to do that, walk the growth path with sustainability in mind and with new technologies, adopting new technologies. We are leapfrogging. All right, Prakash Javadekar, you are the Indian Environment Minister. Thank you so much for sharing your time Thank and your you. expertise with us. I hope that all of the world's Thank leaders remain as optimistic as you are and find a solution for 